You all enjoyed the video you just saw? Yeah. That was by the American Cancer Society of all people. You know, we've come a long way in America, and a lot of the money being spent today on cancer prevention is through the diet that we're eating today. That's what we're beginning to look at because even the American Cancer Society realizes that its diet and nutrition is the number one area of cancer prevention today. But as you looked at that program, what I want to emphasize is the word that stood out the most was what? You remember? Moderation. Now what we teach in this class is not moderation. What we teach in our class is called temperance. There's a difference in those two words. Temperance is abstaining from anything that's injurious to the body and using only judiciously articles of food that are good and healthy for you. So in other words, you don't even want to be a glutton and overeat of the good foods. But you want to abstain from the things that you know are cancer causing. All right? That's a very important point that I want to make, that our emphasis, I don't agree with everything on that video. I don't believe that we can eat salami once in a while, you know, with all the nitrates, the high fat, and the other things wrong with it. I just want to emphasize that. I use that as a tool, as an entering thing into this program so you can see where the world is going on health and nutrition. Why don't you open up your cookbooks to page three really quick. It's called The State of Health in America. This is some information I put together as I compiled my talk and my information for this cooking school. And I found in different areas of research that the state of health in America stinks. It's terrible. As I stated before, the standard American diet in which most people eat in this country is S-A-D. It is sad. And we need to learn what can we do to help change our lifestyle that we will not only have a life that's perhaps free from disease, but also enjoy optimum health. That's a very important point. Not just ward off disease, but to live as healthily, healthily as we possibly can. But notice in these statistics, 48 million people in the United States suffer from heart disease, and this together with strokes accounts for nearly half the deaths in the country each year. Half the people who are dying in this country are dying from circulatory diseases. Poor circulation. And when you have poor circulation, you're not getting the oxygen to your brain. So you can't even think clearly, can you? We find that cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. Over one million Americans die each year from these two diseases. And four out of five persons aged 64 and older have disabilities or chronic disease in this country. I find the next point very interesting. In 1945, one out of 15 people died of cancer. In 1971, one in every six deaths was due to, the, due to cancer. And in 1978, after millions of dollars had been spent on conventional methods of therapy, did you catch that? After millions of dollars had been spent on conventional methods of therapy, what do we find? The rate was up to one in every five Americans. Current estimates are that cancer caused one in every four deaths by 1988 and will cause one in every three deaths by 2008. Notice the diet facts here. In 1987, the U.S. Surgeon General warned that of 2.1 million Americans who died in 1987, nearly 1.5 million were killed by diseases associated with a poor diet. Now, I have found that that is probably some of the most critical acknowledge, acknowledgments that our government has made to date. It was in 1987 that newspaper headlines began to show that the report that the U.S. is eating its way to the grave. This is a study that was done and reported by C. Everett Koop, who was the Surgeon General of the United States. And I was really excited to see that they were coming forward now and revealing this information to the American public. But it goes on and says that millions of Americans are waddling their way to early graves by consuming too much fat, too much salt, and washing it all down with too much booze. Overconsumption is a major concern for Americans. The study said that of 2.1 million Americans who died last year, nearly 1.5 of them succumbed to diseases associated with a poor diet. It stated also that the report repeatedly emphasized the need to cut down on the consumption of animal products and replace them with a greater variety of fruits, particularly 
a variety of foods, particularly fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Isn't that amazing? This is what the world is telling us. Another newspaper that came out with a similar article, I like the heading that was on this one. It said, fatty foods are killing us. And it goes on, and it's the same information that C. Everett Koop came out with. And as we look at this, we begin to realize that we are in a very sad condition in this country. American workers lead the world in degenerative diseases. Doesn't it make sense? It's time to change your lifestyle. Amen. Now let's look at Bill Honig is a superintendent of state schools in California. This was an article that came out July 9th, excuse me, February 4th, 1989. And it states on this headline, Honig says California kids just aren't healthy. And as I look at this information here, you know what amazed me? It says they eat junk food excessively, have too many babies, and drink too much. We're talking about high school kids. And it states that in a recent study, he said 17% of elementary children had a cholesterol reading in the high risk range of 200 or above. Another 20% fell into the moderate risk range of 180 to 200. He said the disturbing levels were the result of lack of exercise and poor diet. Now, as I began to look at this Lodi News Sentinel with, this, with the information they just gave on the health of our teenagers in public schools, I opened up this paper just out of curiosity as I was reading it, and here was the school menus for the week. Now, I want to share a little bit with you on the school menus for the week. Let's read a few. It says on Thursday we're having ham and cheese on a bun, a dill pickle, potato chips, some carrot sticks, and fresh fruit. We're going to have on Monday in Galt cheeseburgers or corn dogs, fries, salad cup, and fruit. On Tuesday, cheeseburger or beef and cheese taco. On Wednesday, cheeseburger or nachos. Thursday, cheeseburger or spaghetti with bread, fries, and salad cup. Friday, cheeseburger or wiener roll-ups. And on Monday, again, corn dogs, tater tots, orange mustard, catsup, pickles. It goes on and on, and they're feeding these kids so much meat and fat and cholesterol, it's no wonder that Bill Honig says, hey, it's out of control. I got to warn California about this. The kids aren't healthy anymore. But we find that in another newspaper article that came out, it says low-fat, low-cholesterol diets suggested for kids. So the world's catching on that, hey, something's wrong with what we're putting in our mouth, and it's time to make a change. 